Alright, welcome back. Um, in the last video we just finished up this quick example, this quick moment distribution example. In this video we're actually going to figure out what the reactions at A, B, and C are. Okay, So to find these reactions we actually need to do three things. We need to figure out what the direct shear is, we need to figure out what the auxiliary shear is, and we need to figure out what the total shear is Okay, at each of the joints. So to find direct shear, um, we basically look at the span, and we treat the span, just the span, as a simply supported beam. So if we looked at A, span A, uh, let's see where I can do this. Do it up here. If we looked at span A, you have this 40 kip, and then it's just it's a simply supported beam and to find direct shear all direct shear is um, to find well to find direct shear what we need to do is take span a b turn it into a simply supported beam and find the vertical reactions that way in this case since 40 is right in the middle we know that the reaction um, here and here are both 20 and they're both going up that's direct shear Okay, assuming that span AB is a simply supported beam. Um, so, here we have 20, and here we have 20, right? 20 going up on both sides. We draw this little arrow just to, you know, say that the direct shear is going up. So, to find the direct shear for span BC, we just look at span BC, so pretend it's a simply supported beam, find the reactions on both sides, and put them down here in this row. So for span BC, you have your 60 kip going in the middle, you have a pin here, you have a roller here, you're just assuming it's a simply supported beam, and obviously you'd have 30 here and 30 here, right? Because it's just right in the middle. So you have 30 here, you have 30 here, and they're both going up. Okay, to find auxiliary shear. Auxiliary shear is the sum of your moments on the ends of the member um, times negative one that would give you your direction divided by length of the span so if we looked at span a b if we look let me actually uh, let me erase all this and we'll take a look at span AB. And I'll, I'll show you how to find auxiliary shear. Auxiliary shear. Where's my pen? Okay. So, if we look, if we looked at our summation of moments row, which is this row right here, on the left side we had a negative 87.5. So. Um, remember our, our assumption is always clockwise but since it was negative it's actually going counterclockwise 87.5 and in this case it's going clockwise and the moment there is 125 right so I'm looking at this number and I'm looking at this number to find auxiliary shear we sum the moments on the member on the whole member and we divide by length Okay, so the sum of the moments, so 125 plus negative 87.5 divided by the length, which is 20, um, is equal to 1.875. So the auxiliary shear on that span is 1.875 here and 1.875 here. F to figure out the direction, we sum the moments and multiply by negative 1. Okay, so we had a positive 125 here, and we had a negative 87.5 there. Um, and if you add those two together, we're actually going to get a positive value, right? 125 plus or minus 87.5 would give us a, ne a positive value. We multiply by we multiply that positive value by negative one, and our final direction is negative. Right, so we had a positive value, we switched the sign, and it became negative. So that means the auxiliary shear is going negative. 
and you know our sign convention, negative is counterclockwise. Counterclockwise. So that means the shear on the right side is going up and the shear on the left side is going down. It's, it's counterclockwise. Okay? Uh, same thing for the right side. We sum the moments. 125 plus 162.5. We divide by the length. Um, and the length is 20. And that should give us 1.875. So we write 1.875 on both sides um, of the span. To get the direction, we look at the we look at the sign when we add the two moments. So we add one negative 125, and then we add 162.5. That is obviously going to give us a positive value. And a positive value, we switch the sign, and we get a negative. And a negative, you know, is counterclockwise. So that means on the right side, we're going up. And on the left side, we're going down. It's counterclockwise, right? It's going this way. OK, so to find auxiliary shear, we sum the moments, divide by length, and switch the sign to get the, the actual sign for the auxiliary shear, right? So total shear, um, you just let me do that in blue. You just sum the shears in that column, and the sign will tell you whether it's going up or down. So 20 plus the 1.875, but the 1.875 is going down, so it's negative. So really, it's 20 minus 1.875. That gives you 18.175. And since it's this is a positive value, you know the shear is going up on this side. Now if you move here, you have a 20 going up and you have a 1.875 going up. So you have 20, 21, right? 21.875 and it's positive, it's going up. We look at this 30 minus 1.875. Why is it minus? Because the arrow here is going down. So you have um, 28.125. And it's a positive value, that means the arrow is going up. And then finally, you have this 30 going up, you have a 1.875 going up. That means the sum is 31.875, and it's going up. Okay, so this, what this is telling us is that the reaction at A is 18.175 going up. So that means the reaction at A is 1 or 18.175 and the reaction at joint B would be the sum of these two shears right so it'd be 21.875 uh, plus 28.125 and that should be let me do this in the calculator really quick 28.125 uh, should be oh well duh 50 50 50 going up and here we have 31.875 going up. So the reaction at joint B, I'm going to write it above, is 50. And the reaction at joint C is 31.875. OK, so this was the moment distribution uh, method. Hopefully, it was a good introduction to the method. It was actually a very simple problem. Um, the, mo the moments at the middle joint balanced out really quickly. Um, in the next couple of videos, we'll actually do a much more in-depth example. All right, so see you then.